there was an awful atmosphere in the country and in general it was very very dark and uh, after the last video I was so disgusted about what happened with the the murder suicides in Ireland it was just like I it just it just kind of it just it just made everything just made me feel sick but uh, things have lifted tremendously since the last video especially the full moon and uh, uh, we did a little bit of a, a folky thing right ritual and it, pe it really helped people feel a lot better which is 90% the point of it it's uh, it's all, like I said it's like popping a balloon of troubles or a balloon of stress and I definitely felt like that come Sunday and uh, uh, Dave Cullen shared that video the last video I made and I think it's like heading towards 60,000 views between both channels so thank you very much for that Dave and thanks to the people who've arrived from that channel I'm very grateful to have you here because we have a little bit of a tribe here that you know the attitude is that we're all no matter what we are what background we come from what we believe in we all have uh, the same fundamental notion that transcends politics and religion and everything else and that's that we're you know we're in a spiritual battle and there's an attempted coup by evil to take over this world at this moment that's unprecedented in history because of the technological the technological capacity and infrastructure they've developed in order to do this through things such as social media but that's also the place we can fight back or at least give people something to think about and I also did AV 11.11 .11 last night uh, and I went very well I was very nervous beforehand uh, because it's 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 actually more nerve-wracking talking to a camera than into an audience full of standing in front of an audience full of 500 people but uh, it went well and t thanks to Ian and Brian over there at UK Column they, they hosted a fantastic thing and uh, the same this all the speakers had more or less the same thing this belief that evil is is definitely attempting a coup to take over the human race and to alter reality in a way that's no longer acceptable to uh, the spiritual and the humanistic even trajectory of humanity and to replace it with replace it with something that's not us because they don't like us it's as simple as that and it's uh, the signs are all around you you know e evil is not determined by religion you know e evil evil can be determined an atheist can understand evil just as much as anyone else through things like you know sci-fi dystopian stories and novels and movies this is a meditation on evil and i think that's basically what things have been since this alternative scene kind of set up a dozen years ago or whenever it started i said to brian garish yesterday we've known there was something stirring below the surface that was dark and wicked and we all caught caught a glimpse of it in the early days and ever since then many people have joined the four uh, people like dave and colin and john waters have come along and ireland to do that and uh, there was one time I, I felt like very much like I was the lone voice here. And there was other people here trying to raise awareness, but they were doing it through things like politics. And I'm not a Republican. I'm, uh, I'm an Irish cultural nationalist, but I'm, not, I'm an anarchist. I don't believe in left or right wing politics. I believe very much in there's, a, there's an organic solution in the middle that can be taken that where governments are run not as philosophical entities that are applying a political or philosophical dogma but they're actually purely an administrative function that does not interfere in the cultural destiny and past of the nation and that means that like any changes that come in the future they happen organically they don't happen because some civil servant has you know is regurgitating something from the frankfurt school they read that was written 50 years ago that's the difference between it happening organically and someone actually socially engineering it and the signs of evil are everywhere and i drew i've been reading a lot lately about the aztec empire now the aztec empire was basically the cultural Marxism of Mesio Mesolithic America, uh, they did not build those fantastic pyramids in in Mex Central Mex in Central America or in Mexico and places like that. 
they uh, they inherit them from priests of a previous culture called the Toltecs. And before that, another culture called the Tula. And they were the ones who really built that stuff. They just took it over. And they became like what our establishment officialdom is becoming today. Literally possessed by demons. I mean, I really do believe that. Whatever demons are, these people are possessed. This is what causes Bill Gates to smirk and giggle like a teenage girl at a, at a prom being asked to dance when he talks about millions dying and stuff like that. And uh, this kind of thing. And uh, this is, the, uh, the, you know, I saw something recently of Antifa. In, and when I say I'm, I'm like having a go on Antifa, that doesn't mean I'm a right winger. I don't like the fucking the, the extreme right either. I don't like either one. And uh, so I, I'm very much kind of apolitical in the traditional sense and all this stuff. But when I, I saw this Antifa goons, they're now symbolically eating the blooded heart of Donald Trump. Have you seen this? I don't know whether it's, if it's, what, it's something made of soy or something. But it's covered in red blood dye or an animal's heart or whatever. But they're in the streets of America, reenacting these Aztec possession rituals by eating hearts, the heart of Donald Trump in the streets. And uh, so it's kind of like I've, I've been, I've been, you know, if you look at my other channel, if, you, if you're a new subscriber to this channel, I've got two other channels beyond Room 313 and Open Source Occult TV, where I basically, get, this is more like kind of like, an editorial thing right but those two channels i give out my knowledge and on the occult and and the esoteric things and stuff like that and the 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 ast you know the aztecs uh along for a long time those those archetypes those monsters inside them don't go away they they move they 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 migrate and i i re honestly believe that the left in america is possessed by the same entity that's the same entities that possess the the uh, the Aztecs. This is why, and 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 it was the right wing before that. The neocons. See, it goes from left to right. The neocons were possessed previous to this, and this is a this the, the, there's a consummation of blood, a kind of a, a baptism of blood always needed by these types, and you know Hillary Clinton was screaming about how she would go to war um, against everybody if she got elected. And this the this the, the entity, this demon force and this demonic force inside her was the same ones that possessed the Aztecs. And when they didn't get it, when Trump got elected, they went insane. And this is why they had this is why they, they it was expressed in things like the awful murders and in, in Las Vegas mass murders in Las Vegas and people setting fire to themselves in front of the White House and all these kind of like other symbols of possession. The the beast needs to feed. It needs to feed. And um, you, can, you can see how towards the end of her reign or to, uh, her election, she was falling asunder. She was literally falling apart because the, the entity inside her thought it was going to be elected. So it had no physical use for it anymore. And poor Joe Biden's the same way. You look at him, the man's falling apart. And you compare that to Donald Trump. And, you know, the, the, he's, fought, he's shining like a fucking a light beacon. And... Uh, there's no black and white answers to any of this stuff. But however, things have improved in the last few days. It's not as dark and iron as it was last week. <laughs> <coughs> there has been a shift. And that shift is very apparent on social media. Up until Wednesday, if you said what about Sweden in the comment sections of Irish social media pages or newspaper comment sections here, you are bombarded with the usual arseholes who think they're so clever by posting the rebuttal to that as a picture of a cat with a tinfoil hat on its head. These would be the civil servants, the college professor types. Like the college professor today in the Irish Times who is a liberal but is complaining that Donald, Donald Trump didn't go to war. This is the kind of, this is how psychotic the academia is today. And talking of academic psychotics, there's an article published in the Big Tink that actually came from some Swedish newspaper where a behavioral psychologist and from the university, uh, the, the Swedish School of Economics, had posted that human beings, in order to tackle climate change, and this wasn't a satire like a Jonathan Swift type satire, this was the real thing, that human beings should start consuming human flesh in order to tackle climate change, that we should eat each other. 
basically the whole eat the poor thing that goes back to royalty and so on. Uh, there's a whole, there's a whole, I thought, I thought, I thought you may not know this, but there was human flesh was consumed by royals in Europe, uh, particularly the British royals, as a matter of fact. Uh, this is not something that's even that's even hidden. There's books written on it, and in fact, one of the one of the biggest exports to, from Ireland to England in the 1600s was human skulls. They used to this Irish people's skulls. This is not a joke. This is real, and uh, this is one of the biggest exports. And the skulls were sent over to England and ground down in a, into a flour and added into food. I'm, this, I'm not joking. You can. This is not. This is not bullshit. This is real. This. This is the kind of world that you get when you l let evil take charge of it. This is the kind of world you get. Real evil. Real evil that sees that determines that humanity is a consumer product for itself. Well, not you know for the psychopathic control grid. Now, in the last week in the Irish papers, they have had numerous. Uh, changes in attitude I've, they, I've noticed a lot of those tinfoil hats or types or you know conspiracy theorists these, these types they've vanished now because they've gone into psychoses with the second lockdown and they've been replaced by other people calling the government liars show us the data actually bringing up sweden it's flipped it's remarkable how quickly it's flipped and it's flipped because the first lockdown worked because of the pup and the nice weather the second lockdown is not working because the government are saying stupid things here like uh, it's too early to know which type of, type of Christmas we're going to have. And people are saying, well, up yours, I'm going to have whatever Christmas I want. Now, it's also starting to... Remember when I said that the, the, the biggest problem with the normies is they have not been able to grasp the fact that the economy was destroyed. This has always been the big one because they're getting the PUP. Well, Ryanair has closed down Knock Airport. Ireland Western Airport, which is up the road for me, which is my the airport, airport I use all the time. And the government, that's shut down, there's no flights. Uh, and it, I think it happens in a couple of days. And Cork Airport, I think, is closed as well. And Cork is like the third busiest airport in the Republic of Ireland. And so two airports have gone. And now it's starting to hit home. It's finally starting to hit home with the normies now. Because, and even things like, Ryanair has posted a, something like a 120 million euro loss and last year they made a 1.2 billion euro profit and when people see these numbers they're finally starting to go okay you see because the whole thing and the COVID thing is run by civil servants and government employees they don't understand the, the private marketplace they that's why they're all socialists and all like like you know involved the groups like people before profit and stuff they don't live in the real world same students they don't live in the real world but people who live in the real world can be they they have a great capacity for denial i gave the expression the, the example last night of a tv show that was on channel four back in the early 2000s called space cadets where they took a bunch of idiots and made them believe they were flying into space uh, from a russian cosmonautic training center that was actually an RAF base in England. And they even put them on a fake spaceship and told them that the Russians, the reason why you don't feel gravity is because uh, the, the, the Russians have developed a gravity-making spaceship. This, and, and they were believing it. And they thought they were in space looking down at the earth, sitting in a little, the most ridiculous looking, it looked like a movie theater with a roller, sh a roller shutter for a shop on the side, opening up so you could see a big widescreen TV view of the earth. And, uh, among them, they planted, they planted people that if someone in the group said, you know, does it, it doesn't really feel like we're in Russia, they would say, oh, really? What do you expect, what do you expect Russians to be like, you know, baddies in James Bond movies? It was to, to break them away from it. You see, and the same thing you see with the civil servants and the, uh, the other spooks on, uh, the, the other inner party spooks on Irish newspaper platforms. Who's, who someone gets in there and said, what about Sweden? They'll say, oh, tinfoil fat rat, rat hair, you know, uh, hat wearer. Or someone else will go, well, according to the stats, it's, it's, you know, Leo's support. It's, uh, you know, Sweden's they're all dying there. They just, you, you know, what do you expect? Your country to be a big experiment. Well, oh, oh, these kind of types, right? And uh, you can see this, there's a huge class element in this, big time. You see, I can see now that rural Ireland is definitely being 
is definitely being punished by this because a 1.5 kilometers limit in rural Ireland will get you to the next field. It's where like in a, a city like Dublin, Cork, Limerick or a big town like Drogheda or Dundalk or Clonmel, 1.5 kilometers can get you into the city center or get you into a, you know, a, a, a neighborhood with shops and things and things you can do. It's 1.5 kilometers in the countryside is a bloody long way. You know, you know, and in that, that, that this, so this is people are kind of waking up to that. That's one of the good things. There's definitely a revolt happening in rural Ireland. I can definitely feel it. And it will happen in working class neighborhoods in the cities and towns, big towns as well. But even the middle, it's all, but it always, they don't care. It's like in England, you can see the class system really big with this. The way they've continuously picked on the north of England. You see people in Lancashire and Yorkshire, people in Liverpool, Merseyside, Birkenhead, Manchester. You're now seeing how the Irish were treated under the British Empire. See, they can't treat us like this anymore because we threw them out. But you're now getting what we used to always get. We got actually worse because we were disconnected. But the same aristocratic, stately home, home counties types, aristocrats in both parties, Labour and it doesn't matter what party you're in. They're all, they're all, you know, they're all descendants of like Anglo Normans from the the Doomsday Book and all this kind of thing. And uh, you're now getting it. You're now getting it. Just like you know, the, the Cockneys in the East End of London got it. They, they're all they were displaced and moved out into an exodus out into Essex. You know, they were taken away from their homeland, and uh, because they destroyed the indigenous communities, and they're moving in immigrants, and they'll destroy them in time as well. They'll, you know, don't think that. You know, that's one of the things. The biggest problems I have. It's not the immigrants' fault because they're just they're just trying to do you know they're doing what they can do in their lives, but they'll eventually be picked on as well. Don't worry about it. They'll get their turn will come as well because you're dealing with the same monster. And there was a good chap called Alex Thompson from UK Column, I think he is, made some very good comments. But he kept calling it the beast, and at first I was like, it's a bit Christian, but then I started thinking about him. Yeah, they work. I like the idea of the beast because I've been calling it a monster in the abyss or the the Leviathan in the labyrinth or something like that. But and it one good analogy is as, is as good as any other. And and speaking of, here, we we're here now. We're here, right? This if you're a, this is it. They have the technology to do it. If you're a, if you're a, a Judeo Christian person, it's the Battle of Armageddon. If you're an Orthodox Christian, it's the Apocalypse, the Great Revealing. If you're a Muslim, it's the Jal. If you're a Hindu, it's the end of the Kali Yuga, Kali the Demon, not Kali Ma, the the Goddess. And if you're um, if you're a, a Norse pagan, it's could be you know rationalized as Ragnarok. If you're a Celtic pagan, it could be the Bave's Prophecy, three thousand five hundred years ago at the Second Battle of Moitura. The rave, the crow goddess, the the babe, who was one of the tripartite goddesses of the Morgana, issued a prophecy among the battle the battle dead, where a time would come where the world would not be dear to me, and that there would be a, a summer without sun, that there would be fields without harvest, and men would go to bed with their sons and daughters, and no man would take a lover outside his own home, and here we are living in it now. Hey, that's another thing we hear about all the the potential horrors going on in Irish homes where mothers and fathers are locked down and hate each other's guts, and maybe they need both needed jobs to stay away from hating each other's guts for the sake of the kids. What about incest? <clears throat> Imagine that one. Imagine that one. Some poor kid who's locked at home in Ireland right now, or in England or anywhere else, and the father's a, is the father's a fucking pervert. Stay home, save lives. This is what you're dealing with. No one, there's, they, they don't care. They don't give a shit. It's a, they, 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 this, is a, this is a coup upon humanity. They're trying to, it's clear as anything. They're trying to take us down. And uh, they won't win, of course, because one of the biggest problems they did was they rolled the dice too soon. They rolled the dice too soon. And they so clearly kept, they, they, they were like, they were like someone who never got laid in his life having a beautiful woman before him. They were like a rat up a drain pipe. No sooner has the had the pass. The weather's very bad here. Weather storm. No sooner had the pandemic been declared that they immediately, fucking immediately, they were talking about great resets and a chance to rebuild the world. And and, and they just couldn't put. They just couldn't hold it back. They shot their loads too soon. 
because they were so giddy and excited that they thought this was it. And even the biggest morons are now seeing that that's what happened. It, they, they were trying with the climate change thing. And their last roll of the dice was the like of Extinction Rebellion and Greta Thunberg. But now that didn't, that didn't fly. Especially when you have like r r rock stars in their 70s who've flown all over the world. Uh, first class and stay in top going I feel guilty now about my my carbon footprint you know well fuck you you had your life you're not the how dare you de deprive the the younger generation of it because you're part of some trendy scene uh, you know this kind of thing and that's this is this they 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 they, they like all psychopathic institutions they rolled the dice too soon they didn't wait a year into the pandemic they didn't wait even six months into the pandemic. They immediately, instantaneously started screaming about great reset. Oh, we can do cryptocurrency. Oh, uh, no income. You know, jobs are over. This new normal. You know, this kind of thing. And they, they could not help themselves because that's when they reveal themselves. That's, like I said, this is the greatest education ever. The true character of a person is shown. Like, during a time of crisis the most spineless maggots if you're going through will show themselves uh, in your life if you're going through a personal crisis as well as the ones who are, who are champions in your comrades but the most spineless maggots will show up as well uh, and this is one of the reasons that it's, it's sometimes it's a good idea in your personal life to pretend when you're going through a bad time you're fucked because then you, the spineless magnets will manifest and then you have a clear trajectory towards the rules of engagement, how to deal with them. And um, the same with the government. Uh, the, the, the spineless maggots show up when the same thing happens. Oh, maybe we need a reset. Maybe we need a 15th lockdown. Maybe we need 1199, this kind of thing. But it's not going to work. I really feel now that it's over. And I really feel that it's happening in Ireland. We're a small country, a smaller country than the UK. We're already a couple of weeks into our second lockdown. And I think in England, particularly in the north of England, you're going to see the initial same things that happened here. You know, like for instance, you're going to see them saying, if they try to dare say something like, on Thursday night start banging pots again for the NHF, you're going to see large numbers of people, in particularly the north of England, going, get fucked. Peep, Geordies, Yorkshire people, Lancashire people, Manx, Scousers, get fucked, mate. They're going to tell them to get fucked. And that's what that's going to happen. And that's happening here now. The, every, it's, I'm seeing it in the papers. Even government, the government posts something here on, on Twitter or something. The comments on the need of you six months, three months ago were like, oh, thank you for saving us, you wonderful politicians. And now get fucked. And they're, po they're posting links to like, the, I'm actually saying that word, get fucked. And they're posting links to uh, Dolores Cattle's videos and, you know, Dave Cullen and, and these kinds of people. And uh, and links to like the, the articles with the Great Reset and, and James Colbert at the Colbert, Rep Colbert Report has done fantastic work recently. And uh, it, this is it. This It's happening. We're, it's turning around. Just look at the, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I've, I've never, I've never been any doubt that we would win this, but I've also been in any, never in any doubt that it's going to be difficult. There will be challenges along the road. This is like Joseph Campbell's the hero's journey. Along the way, there's help and hindrance. There's tragedy and there's magic. There's, you remember, remember, magic rhymes with tragic. To, uh, to, to paraphrase the, the Virgin Prunes. But yeah, so this is the whole thing. We're dealing with... See, nobody escapes archetypes. You're an archetype. I'm an archetype. We're all archetypes. Nobody escapes an archetype. And scenarios are, are a type, okay? And all, you know, this is comparable to so many things they've tried in the past. The Following the French Revolution, uh, the same things. That's why I posted that video I made uh, on the Committee of Public Safety on my open source a cult TV thing, Robespierre and the Committee on Public Safety. The same people are involved. Uh, they, under the guise of safety, they commit atrocities. And in post-revolutionary France, what we're seeing right now happened. It wasn't just that they killed the aristocrats, they killed everybody. In fact, huge numbers of Catholics, something like 70,000 Catholics in the, south, in the south of France were just genocided by the rev under the committee of public safety uh, just because they were it was dangerous to believe in god 
it was dangerous to do this it was dangerous to do that you need safety you need us and it was it was a it was, well, it was just like the bolsheviks it was a mandate or a platform for uh, atrocities now they're doing the same thing now and now you look at what happened in post-revolutionary france when it, eventually rose pierre got he got his head chopped off and the rest of them all either were got were rounded up and captured and got and then they had the restoration of you know a better version of what was pre-revolutionary france yes the republic remained but they brought back the king the monarchy and they brought back the church because they knew that they could have it in a benevolent way it without power so they actually improved the behavior of uh, the the french the committee on public safety in in post-revolutionary france and its atrocities actually led to france becoming a better country they became a republic but they also had the old systems that were that they needed for cultural reasons restored but in a better form it's going to happen with this as well right now the same archetypes are running this thing but it's the people are starting to rebel against it okay and when this is over i'm convinced that we will have things like checks and balances on the likes of of uh, bill clinton that people eventually look like, like what we're saying in our tribe right and all of this whole all to, all scene who the hell is bill and and melinda gates sorry i meant gates not clinton but they're just as bad bill and melinda gates to basically become the arbiters of human life on this planet who the fuck are they well you i could eventually it's going to happen that there will be laws passed that I, them two never get to do that again see they're rolling the dice too soon i'll give you an example i've given from day one in my book puzzling people and in defeat the demons if i know it sounds harsh but it's the truth if the catholic church in ireland was actually improved by the sex scandals coming to light because two things one people who were obedient mass goers learned that you should never be anything like that okay that they be developed a more a more personal if they kept if they remained religion religious they did it for cultural reasons and they were no longer going to do what the priest told them to do okay secondly it got rid of a lot of scum out of the irish catholic church there's still a lot of scum in there if you're going by them telling people not to go to the reek and stuff like that or not but there, there was a it was look i'd rather have cowards in the catholic church than pedophiles and it also made irish people have less of a dependency upon these spiritual arbiters so you know and it also did things like you know it was on heard of of an irish catholic not unheard of but it was very rare for an irish catholic to marry a protestant or another person another religion prior to them destroying themselves and uh they'll never get away with it ever again they'll never get, and eventually led to articles two and three of the constitution uh, here where the, the catholic i think it was the catholic church was considered a special religion or something like that or maybe that was an article three, whatever that has been removed from the constitution quite rightly by the way all constitutions should be secular god should be a a non-determined it god should be a word just for your spiritual destiny not an actual god of any kind and that's up to the individual to then to then apply their god their god to that and so that would have never happened if the the scandals of the catholic church hadn't broke the surface and so the same thing is happening with the likes of bill and melinda gates there's now large numbers of people over the well, millions and millions and millions of people now all over the world who thought that bill gates was just a guy who made windows software and computer software and they're now saying i had no this no idea that this guy was a dodgy bastard that every night him and his wife go to bed tallying up how many africans they prevented from being born isn't that a little bit kind of racist you know this they never would have considered that before they never heard of george soros and the open found whatever is, is open society foundations and whatever all this kind of stuff and uh you it's it's an education it's an education for us who already knew these things on um, lots of things for instance all the fighting and the alternatives in fighting and all the the grievances within the internal scene alternative scene have all stopped there'll be a time where i would have had a 
been very wary about dealing with someone if they were a, a devout Christian. And likewise, they would have been very wary of dealing with me because I'm a, a pagan. And that's all stopped now. We're, we're, we're friends. We're working together. We're, 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 on the, we're on the one road, like the old Irish song, the old Irish rebel ballad. We're on the one road. And it's the same thing. And uh, that's good. That's really, really good. Uh, it solidified us and made, because we now, we, we know that the, the shadow, that's the, sh the, sh the, the, sh the word, word is the common light that's cast the same shadow, and we know where the shadow is. And uh, that's powerful stuff. So, uh, you know, what happens is these uh, megalomanic abuses, you have to have a crisis in order to resolve it. You know, you have to have a, it's like being sick and then find, you know, you, you, don't, you find that you have like, you know, a disease or something or something's wrong, a bone or a hip is in the wrong place. You have to go get it, well, before the hospitals were closed, get a hip operation to fix it. So, you know, it's the, the whole squeaky wheel thing it gets the grease, but it also gets not, noted. It also gets found out. And I can definitely see a point where we will have improves. This is, now people are now learning, millions and millions of people are going, what's the great reset? And they're going, oh, you, automation, AI, what's AI? They're now seeing, oh God, so, hold on a second, they're going to get robots to run the world and computers? And I won't have a job, I'll be sitting at home all day buying everything off Amazon? Oh no, I don't want that. They didn't know that before now. So you understand, there's, there's always look to the reaction to it. Always look to the reaction to it, you know? Uh, it, and then when you know these things you then have information to work upon now again I'm, t I'm, a, I'm advocating the idea of a parallel society parallel societies whether they're the Amish or whatever all over the world uh, travelers here in Ireland do their own thing uh, sometimes in some cases they don't they're not particularly good to others but many most cases they are and <clears throat> individuals let's say in your parallel society life, going from this point forward, this is especially going out to people in England and going into your second lockdown. First of all, keep yourself busy. Here's the thing. Stay away from watching the BBC news and the tallying of numbers every day of so many cases. Because that's witchcraft. Bad witchcraft. It's like, it's like science fiction, you know. Science fiction writers are incredible magicians. Because what they, every science fiction novel is like a grimoire of the future. Because it becomes reality. And, uh, and it is the ultimate expression of art, of magic, art and science in tandem with will. In conformity with will. And that's why so much science fiction seems to come true. You know, the way Arthur C. Clarke in 2001 made special reference to the planet Europa. And now we know Europa is an ex an, a really remarkable planet. And all the Lovecraftian stuff and everything else. Ray Bradbury's four, Fahrenheit 451. I mean, John Waters told people to read the Russians. And I agree with that. And the reads of the Czechs like uh, Kafka. But also read the science fiction writers. And... And then what we have to do now is develop our own, our own version of science fiction where in the future, and this is what I'm doing, in the parallel society, I, I, what happens is the, the science fiction that I'm writing and con composing within my, in my consciousness, not actually physically writing books, is that these checks and because of this behavior of the globalists during the lockdown, that these checks and balances have now come in where the likes of Bill and Melinda Gates can no longer decide the fate of humanity's uh, pharma pharmacological destiny and so on and decide who can who, who who in africa is worthy of life or not and uh, it will be seen as a type of colonialism and slavery which is this it's it's, it's a pharmacological colonialism and uh, just and they'll say well they meant well well so did lots of the colonials i'm sure i'm sure the people that will travel with columbus to the new world well thought they meant well you know, they thought they meant well when they were, you know, killing the Mayans and stuff like that. Uh, they talk, but they just, just, you know, the, the, the road to hell paved, you know, best intentions and so on. And that's an important one to bear in mind. We need, in order for, in order for, in order to defeat the Minotaur and the Labyrinth, someone has to go into the Labyrinth. That's the alternative scene. We draw the Minotaur out of the Labyrinth so everyone can see there's a monster in there. And only by bringing it to the surface is it defeated, and that's why it's it has it because it, it, it will like I said, it will its arrogance is its undoing 
the, the arrogance of the Catholic Church in Ireland, thinking they could get away with Magdalene laundries and, you know, you said selling babies off as lab rats to big pharma pharmaceutical companies or you know throwing septic the thing tune happened but there was a, there was other abuses there and so on that breaking to the surface led to a better society well i got news for you what's happening right now will go the same people will it'll be the, it'll be like that episode in south park where they where walmart turned the uh, walmart took over south park and and, and a Walmart type store took over uh, the town and ended up destroying all the local businesses and they burned it down. This is less, you know, they burned it down. The same thing is happening. There are people are walking around saying, my town is dead, my city is dead, my rural townland is dead, my county or parish is dead. And it, when, it's, when this is solved and it's over and it's done with, this is eyes on the prize. It won't happen ever again. I think the whole thing with the vaccine is now blown wide open. It's they're not going to get that as easy as they thought they would. There, I think that's. I think the whole thing that happened with the mother and baby homes and armed, and the fact that children orphans were used as lab rats by big pharma, has completely stopped the whole thing of the vaccine now in Ireland, uh, and quite rightly too. Uh, it, these things should be by choice, not by not mandated by government. And there'll always be people who run to get them. That's their own choice if they think it does it. But they, I, 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 I can. I, you're starting to see already. It's all gone very quiet. You see, just because they put these apps out there saying, and even the apps thing, like everyone was using their little tracing app before. Now the app doesn't exist. They couldn't give a shit. And it's the same thing with the the, the health passport thing. They couldn't give a shit. It's like it's like just leave me alone. People. You see what that that TV show Space Cadets I spoke about earlier on. One of the most amazing things on that was when they interviewed people and say, "Did you ever ha have any doubts?" And most of them were like normies and NPCs. who said, "No, I really thought it was going to space." But some of them did have doubts, and they said something very interesting. They said that lying to themselves felt better. They said they would think for a moment, "Am I being set up here and scammed, and humiliated for a TV show?" And then they would think, no, no, I really am going to be a cosmonaut. And they said they felt instantly better. And that that's a release of endorphins and it re uh, pleasure receptors in the brain. And we're dealing with a lot of that right now. People are going, well, did Sweden handle it properly? And we, uh, did I lose my job? No, no, I'm sure our government has done the right thing. Endorphins, pleasure hormones, pleasure receptors in the brain. Relief, anxiety stops. But I got news for you, that only lasts so long. And eventually those same people would say, was herd immunity the right way? Would I still have my business? Would I still have my marriage? Would I still, my brother not have killed himself? And then they'll go, it was the right thing. And we were duped. Take care.